Boxing on Channel 5. Defending his name, his legacy, Harlem Eubank. Battling his way up the super lightweight rankings. Can he remain undefeated? Big Fight Live, Eubank versus Uruskieta, Friday at 10 on Channel 5. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're here at the Canary Riverside Plaza. It's not the fight hotel, but it's uh, the media hotel. You've had your press conference. You ready? Fabio Wardley, how are you, mate? I'm good, mate. Ready to roll. How's things with you? Very good, thank you. Uh, kind of a late announcement for the Hawanda card. It was no secret that you were going to be on it. I think he was looking for opponents, but Coffee's the guy. We were just talking about it over there. WBA Continental title on the line and a run out for you. Yeah, exactly that. We we did aim for trying to get the British on here, some sort of defence. That's been the plan for the year, is to defend that three times. Um, it wasn't able to get done for this fight, so we still, decent fight. Michael Coffey, decent opponent. WBA Continental on the line, so another bit of silverware to for me to add to the collection. So overall, still good. Made the best of a, of a, of a bad situation. Why was that? British title not defended is it a case of you couldn't get an opponent were people saying no dad you ask people yeah we'd asked a lot of people we'd asked pretty much anyone that was worth asking to be honest um, and a variety of different responses outright no's by some people later not yet a couple more fights this that the other so yeah look if, if I got away around a bit for those kind of fights then fine I'll wait but I'm not just going to sit idle I'm going to obviously fill them gaps with good fights and, and stay ticking over and stay ready do you take that as a compliment that other top domestic heavyweights are kind of being wary and not just saying, yeah, go on, I'll take that fight? Yeah, of course. It, obviously, it puts a bit of hesitation in their mind when my name's mentioned. So they're a bit, not, I wouldn't maybe not go as far as saying second guessing themselves, but they know they need, they need to be their full selves. They need to have a full camp, fully trained, be fully ready, whatever else. And they need to be at their absolute peak. So. That's fine, no problem to me. If, if we have to do it at a later date, then fine, we'll do it then. On a personal level, how does it feel to be co-main event of an Anthony Joshua headline card at the O2 Arena? Kind of coming up, we saw, like, it's super, certainly your career, Anthony Joshua headline, and he kind of transformed it from the O2 to these big stadiums. But he's back at the O2, and you're the man to just to fight only probably half an hour before him. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. It is crazy. I've tried, for, like, for as long as I've known this and I've been on the card and whatever else, I've tried not to sit and mull over it and go, Carl, look at me too much, because you, get, you can get sucked into that moment. I think more so after the fight, once it's done, once I sit and kind of watch and enjoy the moment properly and go, Carl, yeah, like, I've actually... I've been a part of something massive here, like a real big event and, and something very few people will be able to say they've done. And surely throughout the beginning of your career, even now, you've got to be looking up to Anthony Joshua. If it wasn't for him, you probably wouldn't be in this position just because he kind of got boxing booming once again, certainly at the big arenas and stadiums. Yeah, of course. He's a, he's a massive credit to where... British boxing is at the moment. He was, like I say, he was the golden boy for so long. Of he put it back on on the TV. Those big fights and those getting just you'd say quote unquote casuals or whatever, but just getting average everyday people, not your boxing nuts like you and me, just in, wanting to watch and in, involved, and they want to be a part of the events and stuff. So yeah, of course, he's a massive he's a massive idol and someone obviously you look up to of how he's done his career and what path he's gone on. So. It's, um, it's a privilege to, to be on his undercard as well. How do you predict the main event going between Joshua and Franklin? <laughs> um, I think with Franklin, he's shown that he's, he's comfortable with those big stages, which is not something I don't think we initially, we initially thought of him when he, when he first kind of got it. When we got first announced with the Dylan White fight, you thought, like, uh, he's going to come over and get bowled over in maybe three, four rounds or whatever, and that's, that'll be that. But he gave a really good account of himself and prove that he doesn't, he's not fussed about these kind of events. He can just get down, do his thing and, and keep moving. So, yeah, I think, um, I think AJ's got a bit between his teeth. I think he's got a bit of a point to prove with this fight. And I think he's going to try and make a statement on that as well and try and get him out of there in the, in the first half of the fight. And obviously he's going to want to want to knock him out in, in a good fashion to almost highlight real and go, look, I'm back. This is me now. I don't want to keep you too long because I know uh, Darren's going to get the up with me. You've yeah. got to get back in your car. But 
One name that's got to be mentioned, David Adelaide. Yeah. Umar done an interview with him yesterday, a long format one, and he had quite a few choice words to say about you. He said he's going to smash you up. He said you've got a chin. You're only known in Ipswich. First of all, did you see what he said yesterday and what did you make of those comments? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw it. Um, I saw it on Twitter, funnily enough, where I've been for a little while, for the past week or so. I've been having some fun on there. But I saw it and it was fine. It makes no difference to me. Like... I want you to believe in yourself. I want you to have the confidence because all it does is make things 10 times better for me when I beat you, when I knock you out, and then I can get my media team to find all these old clips of you saying all this and then we'll just end it off with me knocking you out and then it all comes back to bite you in the arse, basically. So, But I'm fine with it. Like You need an opponent to believe in themselves. So on the night, that's when I, when I thrive the most. The same when I had with Nathan Gorman. He thoroughly believed in himself tried to go through it on the night and I came out stronger so I'm, I'm happy to keep proving myself in that way I know you said that domestic fighters were asked for this date can you reveal whether there were talks with David Adelaide was he asked to step in the ring on Saturday night <laughs> no not for this show he wasn't he wasn't for this one he says he doesn't want to make this personal but to be honest, from what he said, could be perceived as trying to make it personal. So, from your point of view, is it getting towards that point? Uh, no, not at all. Like it's, it's all. It all comes with the territory. You're not gonna be 15 and 0, knocked out all your opponents, win a British title, and then think everyone's just gonna be nicey nicey to you. Like it just comes with it. I've got something other people want. That's no problem. Say what you need to say to G you up for the fight. Do what you need to do. Follow me to my to my press conference if that's if that's going to do you favours or whatever I don't mind it makes no odds to me but when it, whenever it comes down to it sooner or later when we get in the ring it's not going to change things for you all of this build up that you've put the hype on is not going to make it any not going to make you any stronger any faster make you hit any harder it's not going to make me any weaker so once it all comes down to it I'm still going to get the win were you surprised that he turned up to the com- uh, press conference today and do you think it was because of yourself and you just wanted to get in your face yeah 1000% he's never I've never seen him at any other shows I've never seen him at any other press conferences he's not a massive AJ fanboy he's not there for the just so to get a glimpse of AJ he was there for me and that's fine like if you like I say if you've got to do those things that you need to if you're not getting enough love and enough attention from those looking after you at BT and you need to come over to me at the zone and follow me around on the AJ undercard I want so you can finally get some eyes on you, finally get some views on you, then do what you've got to do. If I, if I can help you, I'll help you. I don't mind. It, it's no skin off my back. It makes no odds to me. Will that fight happen this year? I hope so. I hope so, yeah. I can't see any reason why not. So he says he wants it. He says he's ready to go. He says he's fit. He says he's healthy. Perfect. So after this, we can talk. Final one, Fabio. What happens when you step in the ring? more imminently on Saturday night against Michael Coffey. Same thing always happens. You'll be entertained, there'll be fireworks, there might be a few dicey moments, but ultimately I'm going to come out with a win, I'm going to come out with a KO. Fabio, thank you very much for being to IFL TV and best of luck Saturday night. Cheers, mate, thank you. Fuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 